The World Wide Web has indeed become a global phenomenon. It is a billion dollar industry for many businesses such as Amazon, eBay and Alibaba just to mention a few. Majority of us use it to find any information required in our day-to-day -day living or line of work. That is the power of the internet. Statistics released by search engine Google show that more than 100 billion things are searched online per month on desktops, tablets and mobile. But what about those who do not have access to the internet? A 2016 International Telecommunications Union report estimates that 25% of the population in Africa have access to the internet. Close at home, in Kenya, the percentage of internet penetration is significantly higher. The Communications Authority of Kenya reported in 2016 that 82% of the population were online. That is roughly about 38 million people. There is still a gap, however. The internet opens up a world of possibilities to anyone who has the chance to access it. One can find answers to the most pressing questions in less than one minute. But what about the 18% of Kenyans who are not online? Who caters to their informational needs? Meet Jamila Mohammed, a young lady who is heading what is the game changer for farmers across the network, seeking to connect to other farmers in Kenya, East Africa and across Africa. Now currently with WeFarm, which is a peer-to-peer -peer network of uh, farmers exchanging information, knowledge and sharing expertise. So imagine how many farmers we have in this country that are in their own farms, in secluded and don't have direct access to information. Uh, with WeFarm, we believe that the farmers are their own, they have their own expertise, that they have been farming, doing it practically for years. And they have so much information to share with each other, only that there's no platform that amplifies the expertise so that they can help each other. And with WeFarm, just with a text, you are able to send your problem or your solution to a network of farmers, crowdsource the information back and relay to the information, that information back to the farmers who need it. The seeds of the WeFarm story began to take root way back when the founder of the app, Kenny Ewans, was working in international development abroad. Kenny spent seven years in Latin America where he directed and designed projects with indigenous communities. Now what's interesting enough is that a lot of the communities were forming agricultural-based solutions. He was inspired by people creating innovative grassroots solutions for common challenges, but he noticed something else. When one went a couple of miles down the road, the people had the same challenges but did not hear of the same ideas or solutions. The question of how to bridge the gap between the problem and the solution plagued his mind relentlessly until the idea to start WeFarm came to pass. The idea was to bring people, specifically smallholder farmers, from all walks of life through a mobile phone. No data bundles required. Now imagine an isolated Peruvian farmer struggling to afford fertilizer necessary to grow more food for his family. Now imagine if he could send an SMS in Spanish that was translated into Kiswahili and received by a Kenyan farmer who could share his method of making low-cost fertilizer. This is a true story which took place during the design and piloting of WeFarm between 2010 and 2013. Jamela shares the unique model of the app, how it works and how it's tearing language barriers down for every farmer across the world. For a very long time, we have been telling farmers we know better, you don't know. We farm came into the market to change that perception and giving the farmers the tools to make them their own heroes and changing that stereotype that the farmer is this poor person this person who doesn't have the knowledge to share, this person who should be given rather than giving. So we're changing that perspective and giving the farmers the tools to make them the storytellers and the ones who are owning that destiny of what do I know and what am I willing to share with other farmers in order for us to get out of this rat race of you know, poverty, of 
subsistence farming of you know not being able to increase our own uh, production just because we don't have information and we're waiting for somebody else to come and solve our problems but now we imagine giving that power to the farmer and say hey we understand you're an expert in your own right here is the tool to do so help another farmer and you'll be so surprised how much the farmers are willing to share information and to support each other so for we farm it's all about you know we are only facilitating that knowledge between you guys that's the first thing that is uni unique about WeFarm. The second thing that is unique about WeFarm is the fact that for the first time is one company that has organically generated information that is directly crowdsourced from the farmers themselves and helping everybody else in the industry make a decision based on this organically generated information. So for example, you will see farmers talking about, hey, what is the right variety of maize beyond the farmer asking for the right variety of maize, then you know that farmer is ready to buy maize seeds. You know that farmer is in a certain location and looking for that specific um, input that they want to um, start farming. And that information is really valuable. How many people in the input industry do you know want to reach to the farmers and do that last mile, but they can't because that information is not readily available. So with we farm, we know beyond what the farmers are helping each other with, what the industry needs based on what the farmers are saying. So that's a unique aspect as well. So initially I mentioned that uh, we farm is based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. The system is able to detect which language the farmer is conversant with. For example, if I sent a question in English and the farmer responds in Swahili, automatically the system can tell that the farmer speaks Swahili or prefers speaking Swahili. In Uganda, for example, we have two extra languages, local languages that the farmers are using beyond English. Yeah? So with time, this is a machine that is intelligent enough to learn more and give people the preferred languages. And hopefully soon we will add multiple languages that many African countries are speaking and spoken in many African countries that will help the farmers to reach beyond, you know, I don't know English, I can't use this system. So imagine a point where no matter what language you're using, your question always gets answered or you're able to get the information that you're looking for. Um, right now four is English, Swahili for Kenya, Konyankole and Luganda for Uganda. Yeah, so it's four, but we can easily add more languages depending on how big the network of the people who are speaking those languages are. To explain even better, Jamila shares with us an animation to show you just how it's done after we come back from the break.